And then the monograph is made mandatory by a decision of the general director of uh, ANSM. This is a new procedure since January 2007 to facilitate the administrative things. And the publication is made on the website of the ANSM. What is interesting to mention is that the expert group are made of people from all stakeholders uh, or having um, um, applications, but also people from uh, labs control authorities of licensing and also uh, inspectorate, uh, and people from university, of course. Um, as as uh, it's easy to, to come after Werner because he explains every European uh, organization. So um, you see, we work with the European monograph together with general monograph. Example, a home optic preparation, mother tincture, herbal drugs that are defined in the European monograph. Also, um, uh, the methods of preparation of home optic stocks and potent potentization uh, include the French method, the traditional French method of uh, homeopathic uh, preparations, uh, like mother tinching for herbal drugs and for animal matter, glycerol macerate. The, the major um, method of preparation that was included before in the French pharmacopoeia. Uh, the European uh, pharmacopoeia um, has now 30 monographs for homeopathic stocks uh, that are uh, common uh, approach uh, between the, the, the older um, German and French monograph. Currently, the French pharmacopoeia uh, published uh, uh, 298 monographs for homeopathic stocks. Those two stocks are defined uh, with different origins. 70% um, around are from herbal's origin. Uh, chemicals are around 25. Uh, animals, 3%. three, three percent. And uh, uh, microscopic yeast, uh, more than, less than 1%. Uh, during the last five years, uh, only one new monograph has been drafted and uh, 18 um, new revisions. Um, the structure of a monograph for stock of herbal, medic uh, herbal origin is uh, first uh, defining the herbal drug uh, with a cross-reference with the herbal drug which is defined in the French or in the European pharmacopoeia if they are available or if they are not available, we have to define the, the, the quality of the herbal drugs. All the general requirements for herbals are mandatory too and defined in the European pharmacopoeia. For the mother tincture, the monograph defines uh, definition, production, the production used uh, in the French uh, tradition, characters, identification, tests, like uh, ethanol, dry residue test for adulteration, limit test uh, where, where necessary, and an essay of a marker. Um, coming back to the essay of a marker, of course, we, it, it was easy in France because we, have all, we had all uh, the information from the licensing dossier and with the stakeholder and with the, the companies we can discuss around the table uh, on which data and which common um, um, method of analysis and marker we can define in the French pharmacopoeia. Uh, test for adulteration, for example, the monograph of Oregonum ma majorana uh, uh, has a research for mother tincture of Oregonum vulgare because there are some, uh, some falsification uh, often uh, uh, seen. There is in Drosera um, a limit test for plumbaging, that is a toxic naphtokinone max with a maximum li with a test li limit. Uh, and for um, the essay of a marker, um, the, the, we have, for example, uh, some non-specific uh, essay in spectrophotometry or titrimetry for Dozera, as I told you before, or some specific uh, essay like uh, HPLC of gas chromatography. 
So of course we are fully interested and, and in, in, in line to, to, to a reopen harmonization, to fulfill, to have a, a major increase of number of specific monograph for homeopathic stocks and we hope that we will find an issue in drafting all those uh, monographs and especially those who have a toxic uh, uh, toxicity that we, we can find a, a common approach at European level and then and, um, find an agreement uh, to, to find, to have uh, enough description to reach appropriate quality. Um, also the idea to, to have the, an updating of the French monograph, that it is also the, the same, but we have also uh, difficulties with the resources, with the strategy of the labs control, uh, we, um, we have started a revision of um, all the assay using uh, boric acid to avoid the, the, the use of boric acid in, in the test. Uh, the idea is to update the monograph and to introduce a specific assay instead of not specific assay in, in the assay uh, chapter. Thank you. So here is the agency. <laughs> Uh, I think European pharmacopoeia and the French pharmacopoeia both, the French pharmacopoeia has more monographs, more number of monographs. And uh, uh, of course, European pharmacopoeia committee is more strict in selecting what monographs are to be included into the European pharmacopoeia. But French pharmacopoeia probably exclusively for the, uh, the, the uh, homeopathic uh, products. Uh, am I right or you have the general? Is it for uh, exclusive only for the homeopathy or different pharmacopoeia? No, no, it's a, it's a full pharmacopoeia with all, all and also national formulary, but it's, it's not separate, but yes. it's, it's a little pharmacopoeia. Now it's not published in a paper. It's only on web style, so we escape the publish. Okay. Okay. Uh, difficulties, and then we also rely on the European pharmacopoeia yeah. for all the rest, uh, okay. general methods, uh, chemicals, monographs, okay. Uh, yeah. biological, and so on. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, in the open forum we will discuss, I have certain questions to ask and uh, discuss with the experts how to go about, there are certain complications, certain problems, especially with homeopathic monographs. That I'll discuss in the uh, discussion period, but now I um, invite the next speaker, from USA, Dr. Bodman. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like you to notice the in 10 minutes on the top of the slide there. Uh, I'm about to give you a two and a half hour presentation in 10 minutes. So let's get started. I noticed that we're all two hours since our last jolt of caffeine. Um, and I may get everyone to stand up and sort of aerate here a little bit, but we'll, 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 we'll survive. Um, in the United States, um, the, uh, the regulatory pastiche is, is something that I talked to you uh, about yesterday. Um, the, the, uh, there are a number of federal agencies uh, that are involved with the regulation of homeopathic medicines. There's the Food and Drug Administration, which deals with claims labeling and good manufacturing practices. There's the Federal Trade Commission, which deals with advertising and now has a certain authority over labeling. And then there are other organizations, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which, which deals with safety, uh, ATF, which deals with ethanol usage, uh, and then others, the, the Environmental Protection Agency, California Prop 65, and so forth. Um, you know, I was supposed to animate this. Um, in as much as um, homeopathic medicines cross state lines, and this is an important issue in the states, um, the raw materials come from different places or the customers are in different places, the federal government can assert authority over homeopathic medicines via the Interstate Commerce Clause in our Constitution. If, in fact, you are capable of producing a homeopathic medicine where everything is sourced within the state that you live and all the customers are in that state, FDA, doesn't have to, FDA does not have jurisdiction. But the fact of the matter is that that's, just, that's practically impossible. Um, so let's give you an a, a overview of how the regulation develops. 
In the US, we have, as everybody knows, three branches of government. And in fact, while we can have a strong president and we can discuss that president at length, um, the fact of the matter is that the president can't create law. Law is created by, by the legislative part of the government, and that has to go through a process between two houses, the House and the Senate. They have to vote, they both have to agree, and then they have to consolidate together before that happens. And then the president can either sign or not sign. There are a variety of different parliamentary mechanisms, but the fact of the matter is that to get law made in the United States takes time, and it takes a lot of uh, switches being flipped. The judicial branch of the government then goes back and looks at that law and says, does it follow the Constitution or not? It is important to understand that once a law is made, then the executive branch takes that law and implements it. The way they implement it is by promulgation of regulation, and that regulation is subject to notice and comment rulemaking. In other words, it has to go back out to the public, and the public has to at least see what the, what the, uh, what the executive branch is doing. Subsequent to that, the agency can write what is called guidance. That guidance is not subject to notice and comment rulemaking, and guidance is really where the FDA has its power. And in fact, the homeopathic, um, 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 the homeopathic regulation in the United States really comes from guidance. So, so let's look at the federal piece. We are really operating under two, under two major documents. The first is the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act of 1938, which includes um, the homeopathic pharmacopoeia as the definition, in the definition of a drug. The second is the guidance that FDA uses called the Compliance Policy Guide, which was first published in 1988, uh, promulgated in 1988, published in 1990, and is now up for review. Um, in addition to, the, to the, those two pieces of law, the most important piece, as far as we're concerned, is the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of the United States. It's recognized in the 1938 Act, um, and drugs monographed in the HPUS are considered, uh, are considered to be official, or the other word is compendial. Homeopathic drugs that are not monographed in the HPUS may be sold, but FDA may inquire about indications for use or preparative methods. Um, further, since homeopathic drugs are not subject to pre-market approval, uh, all homeopathic drugs in the United States, whether they are compendial or not, are considered to be unapproved new drugs by FDA. This is a legal definition that doesn't, uh, doesn't affect their ability to be sold. The Homeopathic uh, Pharmacopoeia of the United States is, a, is a, uh, uh, a nonprofit NGO which takes its roots back to the 1880s in Germany in Yars Pharmacopoeia and was published uh, for the first time in the, United, in, in the United States in the early part of the 20th century. The Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Convention of the United States dates to 1980, um, and, um, and, and in the year 2000, we went to an entirely digital version. So HPUS right now exists in an online environment only. Uh, HPCUS has about 1,295 drugs approved, and, and the HPUS uh, function basically falls into five areas. The first is drug evaluation and the creation of drug monographs. The second is pharmaceutics the de and, and uh, specialized GMPs. The third is say, uh, standards and controls parameters, assay parameters for both mother tinctures and in some cases further potencies. The fourth is safety evaluation and toxicity evaluation and the publication of the lowest safe potency level so that the FDA and the public know, for example, we talked about belladonna and, and a few other things, what the safe, lowest safe potency for OTC use is. And finally is the publication and dissemination of the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of the United States. FDA's role in this is enforcement, and in basically there are three levels of enforce, enforcement for FDA. The first is um, drug registrations. This doesn't apply to homeopathic medicines uh, beyond the fact that we get an NDC number from the FDA. FDA does look at labels and claims, and they have a definition of OTC, particularly that they apply self-limiting condition that doesn't require monitor and mo monitoring and, and, and diagnose. Um, <coughs> Yeah, monitoring and diagnosis. And finally, FDA uh, enforces GMPs on facility inspections. There are facility inspections of two types. One is normal, and the other is what they call a four-cause inspection, meaning FDA is interested in finding something, and so they come to look for it. 
Finally, the Federal Trade Commission is involved in the regulation of homeopathic medicines in as much as they're looking at claims on labels. And right now, this is an important part of the regulatory framework in the United States because FT FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is asserting significant control. But what they have told us is that if you properly disclaim on a label saying that the medicine is in fact homeopathic, number two, that you say on the label that it is not pre-approved by FDA, but in point of fact is used according to homeopathic principles, traditional principles, and thirdly, that the claims fall within standard OTC sort of framework that the FTC will be satisfied. That's ongoing. But there are three basic principles to what FTC is looking for. This is the example of a, of a disclaimer. A disclaimer needs to appear on both labeling and on advertising. So you can see here it says, the uses of our products are based upon traditional homeopathic practice. They've not been reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration. It's a safe harbor in the United States right now if you put that on both labeling and advertising. Now, it does not allow you to be a bad actor. It doesn't allow you to have an OTC product for cancer. But at the same time, the FDA and FTC seem at this point to be somewhat satisfied with this approach. So um, a, a quick summary, homeopathic drug products in the United States, the major federal agencies that overlook are the Food and Drug Administration and the Federal Trade Commission. The guidance that they use is the HPUS. HPUS has no enforcement authority. Uh, they, uh, HPUS's guidelines are simply guidelines. FDA has to enforce those guidelines. Um, and finally, there are best practices that, that, that you should use in the United States, that is, to disclose that the product is homeopathic prominently in labeling and advertising, to disclaim that the product is pre-market approved by the FDA, and finally, it, compendiality, that is, to use homeopathic medicines that appear in the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of the United States. And I'm proud to say I did this in nine minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, I think it is quite interesting to note that the homeopathic drug is not registered by the FDA. Am I correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. The homeopathic drug in the U.S. is not registered by the FDA. It's, it is registered in as much as FDA issues a number called a national drug code, but that does not represent pre-market approval. It just simply says they know about it and there's a number in the file. So it is the FTC which is more uh, regulatory for the homeopathic drugs, not the FDA? No. Uh, FTC simply is looking at advertising and claims. Okay. Okay. FDA is looking at GMPs and enforcement of pharmacopoeial standards. But the def under the definition of drug, it does co doesn't come? The definition of drug appears in the, in the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, and it includes any article that, that is in the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of the United States. So if you have a drug that is compendial, that's in the pharmacopoeia, it is legally a drug in the United States within the meaning of the, of the, of the drug law. Okay. okay. Okay? Thank you. Right. Next, I invite Dr. Rajiv Sharma from India. He's the director of the PCM. Very good morning to all. Honorable Chair, eminent speakers on the dais and the August gathering. Chairman rightly said, pharmacopoeia is the heart and the soul of the system, and system always requires the quality medicine. But who has the honors for the quality medicine? That is ultimately manufacturer and the regulators. And pharmacopoeia is the only tool to assess the quality of a drug and to make the regulation in respect of the quality drug, pharmacopoeia is the only tool. So with these words, I start pharmacopoeia. Pharmacopoeia is not a simple book. It, is, it has own boundaries, own limitation. Pharmacopoeia is another sense. It is a basically official compendium of the monograph which has the minimum standard, not above. Minimum standard which are feasible under the given circumstances subject to revision and the scrutiny. One should take into consideration pharmacopoeia is a dynamic document which has to be changed according to the advancement of the technology to assess the quality of the drug. Standards are man and mandated to ensure the quality, safety and the efficacy. The pharmaceutical products are always tested for the quality with reference to the pharmacopoeia. Or, and as per the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, 
uh, homeopathic pharmacopoeia and is the regulatory book under the second schedule of the Drugs and Cosmetic Act. Now you can see we are well defined in respect of the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of India for quality control of homeopathic drugs in the drugs and cosmetic we have the second schedule which specify the specifically pharmacopoeia to follow it for import of new homeopathy drug under rule 30a we have the requirement of the pharmacopoeia for the labeling purpose under the rule 106a we require the pharmacopoeia and under schedule k nomenclature of certain biochemic tissue remedies shall be labeled in generic or pharmacopoeial nomenclature for gmp schedule m1 is the prescribed it is well known to us this is the simply, this is the overview of the homeopathic pharmacopoeia so far. We have published the 10 volumes of the pharmacopoeia, latest one is the 213. This is the last five, 50, uh, five years it has been published. Here I would like to mention it, ki our pharmacopoeia is in a progressing. It is like addendum. It is not a one volume like the HPUS or the GHP because there will, that, uh, in the coming years, we will be in the position to compile all in the one and we will go for the, in the revise, re, revising, uh, revisionary mode. Now, it, uh, this is the bird, why you, uh, bird eye view of the homeopathic pharmacopoeia. We have published 10 volumes. First volume was published in the 1971. 10 came in the 2013. Total number of the monographs, if you count, it is the more than other pharmacopoeia. 1,112 monographs has been completed. And we also revised the monographs. 173 monograph has been revised. In total, actual monograph, which I have been placed in the 10 volumes, those are the goes to the 1,112. We are also having the finished product standard for the mother tincture. Those are limited to the 263. We are going to work on, we are working on it. Volume 6 and the volume 8th of the pharmacopoeia consist of uh, finished products standards. Monograph in HPI as other pharmacopoeia, we have the monographs on the botanical origin drug, geological origin drug. Chem chemical and metal origin drug and the no source we are microbiological origin we are having finished product so this is the plethora of the all the type of the drugs which are compi compiled in the monograph this is the standard format uh, format which we, we have been followed so far it has been already now presently revised because commission has come in, in the existence india is the country of the diversity other countries we are having they are having the only one pharmacopoeia we have the five pharmacopoeia indian pharmacopoeia is the Foremost pharmacopoeia, same time we have the Ayurvedic, Yunani, Siddha uh, and ultimately a homeopathic pharmacopoeia for which we are discussing today. So we are the five pharmacopoeia but now we are trying to uniform the, their format. So this is the basic primarily format which have been followed. The pharmacopoeial title which is the homeopathic name of the drug is given. It is invariably on the product which has to be given. Scientific name means definition of the drug, common name, description pharmacognostical characteristic for the identification and other parameters are also given with the history and authority and preparation as given in the standard homeopathic text are given here. Pharmacopoeia, if you go for that uh, global level, how it looks from the other planet, you can see it. In the world, we are having that 49 pharmacopoeia, major pharmacopoeia, everybody knows, USP, BP, European, Indian pharmacopoeia. In this galaxy, we are also having a homeopathic pharmacopoeia of India. France and Germany, Mexico and British pharmacopoeia are, are the only one pharmacopoeia those are have given the place in their mainstream as a for homeopathic pharmacopoeial monograph. They don't have other pharmacopoeial monograph in other book. Uh, in British pharmacopoeia, more than the, the 30 pharmaceutical preparations, homeopathic pharmaceutical preparations have been placed there. Now you can compare our pharmacopoeia. It has been compared with the Indian pharmacopoeia, German pharmacopoeia, homeopathic pharmacopoeia, and British. We match with everyone what we are having. You can see it here. Only the characteristics of the mother tincture and the assay, which uh, our chairman has told, is not there, but we are incorporating in under the revisionary mode. You can see it. Now, this is the sole journey of the, our homeopathic pharmacopoeia. 1956 was the time when a homeopathic advisory committee was constituted. They started the task for it. 1962, Dr. K.G. Saxena, honorary homeopathic advisor, was the first person who started the work. In 1962, B.K. Sarkar, then Jugal Kishore, Devan, Harish Chand, these were B.K. V.T. Augustine and K.P. Majumdar. These were the person who just started. In 2004, Dr. S.P. Singh was the chairman of the homeopathic pharmacopoeia. Now we are the lucky enough, he's on the dais. And the, our present uh, pharmacopoeia chairman, Professor Nayak, is in the audience. He is there. We you can see him. 
and the secretariat for the homeopathic pharmacopoeia is the, is the central council for research in homeopathy at uh, under the leadership of the dr manchanda in the world you can see also this in 1825 was the year when first homeopathic pharmacopoeia came by the dr C. Caspari in 1870, first British pharmacopoeia by the British Homeopathic Society was there. In 1872, German homeopathic pharmacopoeia was the first published. And this is the area. But you see in comparison to India, in India, 1893 was the era when pharmaceutics manual was published by India by the M. Bhattacharya. This was the book for the standard. We be complement for their Herculean task they have taken up and it was the journey started by them. 1962 Bhattacharya and company revised this homeopathic pharmacopoeia. But official pharmacopoeia in terms of the official government of India it came only in the 1971. These are the collaborators of the pharmacopoeia work in India. Pharmacopoeia commission that is recently established in 19... Uh, sorry, 2014, it is having the enfold homeopathy along with the Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddha system. Uh, Professor S.S. Handa is chairing the commission as the scientific body chairman. He looks after all the affairs of the scientific. And he's the, another word we can say, he is the person who is leading the all pharmacopoeia in India. We, uh, we have the ovation for him. A homeopathic pharmacopoeia committee was, uh, is the another um, uh, body which, who looks after the work and homeopathic pharmacopoeia laboratory and central council for research in homeopathy are the, those are the center, those are carrying the experimental work developing the standard for homeopathic pharmacopoeia and as well central council for research in homeopathy is also secretary uh, as I said for the homeopathic pharmacopoeia committee and for, for the pharmacopoeia. Next. This is the homeopathic, uh, sorry, this is the pharmacopoeia commission for Indian medicine. This is the umbrella organization for all the pharmacopoeia. We have the prime mandate to publish the and revise the pharmacopoeia and formularies and the codex too because uh, there is no concept of the homeopathic pharmaco uh, uh, formularies for the homeopathic as rightly uh, Dr. Iswari Das has also suggested for the code uh, formulary purpose. But I would like to mention it in the homeopathic monographs, we are also giving the formulation, but it can be compiled as a part of the formulary in the years to come. We will take up, sir, the, to nurture and promote the awareness. We exchange the information with the international organization. We maintain the national repository and all for the authentic uh, reference rendered sample for the, all the pharmacopoeia. We generate the chemical uh, reference markers too. This is the homeopathic pharmacopoeia. As Dr. Handa has said, ki we need an uh, expert from the different disciplines because this is a teamwork. We have the eminent person as the chairman who is in the stalwart in the field of the homeopathy. We, uh, we have one expert from the analytical chemistry, pharmaceutical chemistry, homeopathic pharmacy, far field of the pharmacognosy. This is the constitution you can see. Advisor homeopathy is the official member, he is ex-official member of the pharmacopoeia committee and director of homeopathy pharmacopoeia laboratory is also the official member and designated member of the homeopathic pharmacopoeia committee and DG chair, Dr. Manchanda is the member secretary of this homeopathic pharmacopoeia committee. How the workflow, when we start to develop the pharmacopoeia standard committee decide which monograph has to be taken, CCRH and HPL and the project, project mode outsourcing we develop the standard. These standards are validated by the pharmacopoeia commission then it we are placed before the HPC homeopathic pharmacopoeia committee which gives the approval for pharmacopoeia standard. Then we host on the website for the comment. Then approvals of the co compiled monographs are placed before the scientific body and general body and they finally take shape in the shape of the pharmacopoeia. How we develop the mon in the monograph development we always keep the view of the Indian standard industry so that a small scale laboratory can also follow the quality standards which we are giving in that one. We fulfill the requirement of industry so that import standards can be minimized. Monographs are always screened by the homeopathic pharmacopoeia committee. Now a question comes which monograph which we have to include in that one. We have the certain criteria the drug should be in national health program. It should be in the essential drug list of the homeopathy or it, uh, it should be in also included in uh, other words uh, homeopathic pharmacopoeia and uh, it, the drug should be in the homeopathic tax, tax and the repository and drug should be uh, appropriate, considered appropriate. This is the more important drug should be considered appropriate by the HPC or homeopathic pharmacopoeia commission. We have also the exclusion criteria that drug should uh, the drugs banned in the in India is not included, obsolete drug and drugs record 
require a clinically approval that also excluded. Now, what, what we need the only the three types of the standard one for identity, purity, and strength. Other requirements are also in terms of the bio burden and the heavy metal. Now, selection of analytical method. Beside monographs, we have the two parts. One is the general notices and the other is the appendix. Appendix always gives the insight for the method which has to be followed to comply the, uh, for the conformance of the standard. Method should be simple. It should be most specific, productive, economically viable, accurate and precise, and fully optimized before transfer to the validation. So these are the criteria for the analytical method. Uh, effective use. Now, this is more important. We have to. Uh,